What's up, team? Sean from Rest to Live. And I haven't talked about Palantir for a while, and I wanted to give you a little update on something that I've been working on, as well as what I'm generally hearing and what my experience has been in and around this industry, really analytics, AI, operationalizing all that information. So with the recent downturns in prices, which, by the way, across the board, equities have gotten absolutely smashed. It's for good reason. We still have inflation fares. We still have recession fares. We still have a general sense of not well-being in the markets. And also from a company perspective, we're seeing a lot of companies that are slowing hiring, they're performing layoffs. Things just sort of in a general sense aren't where they really should be. Now, what I want to share, though, is some experience from the other side of the aisle here. Oftentimes, when companies are going through these kinds of issues, the places they're looking to really cut are going to be things like headcount, right? We often will see this happen with contract employees. We'll see this with uh, folks sometimes from marketing. Sometimes we'll see it happen with folks who are on the HR side of the business, right? Typically, we see sales hit last. We see folks who work in analytics and data science hit last. But what we really want to start paying attention to is where does money shift to? Money shifts to ROI from uh, TCO. Sorry about that. I got my mind mixed up for a second. So TCO is total cost of ownership. And what, what we'll see during periods like this is we'll see tech audits. A tech audit is when a team will come in and understand the total spend of all IT architecture, how it relates to other components, where there's redundancies or overlaps, and they'll look to cut back and save in areas like that. Now, one area in my traditional experience that we haven't seen this be so bad or really at all is in and around things like intelligence, reporting, dashboarding, the, di the diagnostic descriptive views. We don't see this so much in the predictive prescriptive views either. And the reason for it is simple. We're not talking about a part of the stack here that we have to really address total cost of ownership. We're trying to turn the dial a bit and understand, is this an area for a return on investment where for every dollar spent, we have some theoretical return on that dollar that's above and beyond our spend, including installation, implementation, training, et cetera. So I wanted to bring this up specifically because I think as a lot of people know, I talk sometimes that, you know, I am in Palantir at a really good price. I do, I do pick up options when I feel like the pricing is right. And full transparency, I am in both in options and I am also in equities. I have no plans now to buy anything for a little bit. Uh, when when the price got down to the mid sevens, uh, I started to pick up more long call options with a 750 strike. It was just too damn good at that price. Now, I'm being clear here. This is definitely not some financial advice. It's not a recommendation. And in fact, I want to be even more clear than normal. You don't know my whole portfolio. So it's important to understand the way that I hedge is very much tied into a larger strategy. So when you hear things like <clears throat> leveraging call options to take advantage of pricing opportunities, there's oftentimes a very complex derivative plays built into that. So the reason I'm sharing that is I don't want anyone to rush out and try to copy this because you may not be executing at the same price. You might not be at the same kind of um, execution point that I'm at when I'm doing it. I just want to share this from the standpoint of what I'm seeing and why it has me interested. So look, here's the deal. I think that analytics and AI are the future. No question. It's not even, it's no doubt. And I think that what we're seeing right now is Palantir as a whole is suddenly realizing they have to start to play nicer. They have to play a little bit better. It has to become easier to use, easier to communicate. They need to be more clear about what they're putting out there. And oftentimes, this means appeasing people. It's hard to do when you run a very complex company with very strong ideals, but sometimes you have to lower the ideals slightly. I know it's hard to do that. And I think that's what we're seeing a bit here is we're seeing a little bit of a softening of CARP and we're seeing a little bit more of an adoption of the product. So I work full time in very deep <coughs> operational embedded analytics, uh, different than Palantir, although I know the space really well. And what I feel is an asymmetrical opportunity for my portfolio in the way that I build it around these low prices. Um, I will not. I will tell you first and foremost, this is not the only play I'm making in the analytics space. I added to a number of positions, but I also play the options track because I'm limited to my loss on only the premium I paid while also having that sort of large scale likelihood of seeing a gain in those underlying options. I know someone's gonna ask, so I'm just gonna tell you, I ladder my, my timelines. So some of them are closer terms, some of them are further terms, some are leaps, okay? Just keep that in mind. Um, and in a great bit of irony, um, they're actually, for the most part, already in the green after just one day. So it just goes to show why you have to really have an understanding of the industry you're in, the sector you're in, the positions or companies you like within that sector or industry, and then the way you're going to play to take advantage of things when the opportunity is there.
Now I had sent a tweet out on my uh, Twitter handle the other day that I also had been buying puts on T triple Q as well as SoFi on um, the news of the CPI cut. Um, and I was able to enter and exit those positions very quickly for very nice little wins. And I think the key takeaway here that I want to get across is that whether it's Palantir or anything else, you need to be optimized to take advantage of opportunities when they hit immediately. You have a plan, you know how to execute on the plan, and you're going to go after it. One thing I've com- I've been reiterating time and time again, my average pricing in Palantir is around the 7 to $8 range when I'm buying options contracts at the 750 strike. It would be very hard for me to take a catastrophic loss at these prices. I also protect myself for downside risk as well, but I'm calling this out because you you have to have conviction in the company, but your execution is a whole different conversation than just your conviction. You have to have a plan to execute based on your conviction, not blind conviction with just buying for the sake of it. So that's it. I wanted to do a quick update on this. I haven't talked about it for a while. Um, I'm pretty excited. I think seeing this downturn is going to present a lot of opportunities for a few things. Data is not shrinking. Data is getting bigger. It's more complex and there's more of it than ever. We continue, and it's never going to stop, to see siloed, disparate data sources that are disconnected. They're on-prem, they're in the cloud, they're on private clouds, they're on private database systems. We're even still seeing mainframe data hitting the market still, by the way. The reason I'm calling this out is the ability to connect to, make sense of, visualize, and execute and operationalize that data is extremely important. Not everyone can do it. For me, there are several that can do. Palantir is one of them, and that's why I'm going uh, in this direction. But I want to say it one more time, and I'll end the call. Very simply, you have got to have a plan for how you're going to execute based on your level of conviction while also looking out for your downside. That's it, team. Thanks for watching. Let's hope we see these prices go way up. But either way, I think it's a great opportunity for me and my portfolio. And if you're playing it the right way, probably the same for you. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a good one.